Hello and welcome to another little tutorial video on this homepage, which will be a little bit different. In this video, I'll show you how to set up your own photography homepage in about 10 minutes. And I'm not talking about a homepage which you click together online by just dragging and dropping. I'm talking about getting your hands just a little bit dirty with HTML and CSS, but it's not hard. I've created a template system, a build system for homepages, which you can use, which yeah, takes away a lot of the things you would have to think about if you would start from scratch. So over the past month, really, I was working on my own homepage and here in parallel, I made a template system, a build system for my homepage, which is now available for free. And yeah, all those hours, all those countless hours I spent on that, yeah, you don't have to spend it. You can just use my template system and have a very quick start. First, let me show you where you can get this template I was talking about. So here in my GitHub, I have it available. And yeah, if you're a developer or have Git installed, the Git bash, for example, for Windows, you can just clone this repository. Then you automatically get every update I do by just pulling it. But yeah, if you're not a developer and are not familiar with Git, that's no problem. You can just download it as a zip file. So do just that download this zip file and extract it. Now, in addition to this zip file, you have to download two more things, which I couldn't include because of licensing. So under scripts, if you go to the base jQuery, you find a readme with instructions on downloading version 3.4.1 of jQuery. So if you go to this link, you can go here to this 3.4.1, minify it, right click, and then save it. And here you put it into your extracted folder under exactly this path. So under source, scripts, base, jQuery, you put this minified version. And then there's another script which you need to download. It's under contact, the jQuery validate. There's again a readme which points you to a download location. And here, if you scroll down, you can download here this minified version of it, the version 1.19.2 and place it under this path where the readme is. And then we're ready to go and can work with the homepage template. But before we continue with the contents of the zip and I show you how to create a homepage, let's first have a look at what can be done with a template. So for example, my homepage is completely based on this template. So all you see here, for example, this slideshow, this is contained even with the zoom effect. Then you have a contact form, which is fully functional. This is contained. We have the galleries here. This is contained, you have full screen, even have a prints available section, which changes based on the image. You have history and the browser. So a lot of stuff, even a blog, that's all included in the template. So let me show you when you build the template out of the box, how this looks, looks a bit different. It's more like a clean slate here, which you have to fill. So what this template does, it yeah, gives you the complete base. So everything you need, which takes a lot of time to figure out, for example, a good structure for the homepage, creating a good gallery. So the JavaScript for that, this took me a lot of time to perfect. Then a contact form, how to include imprint, privacy policy, disclaimer, social media, all this stuff, all the structure, it's already there. What you just have to do is fill this with content and also provide your own styling, your own look for the page. So now you might be asking why use such a template system as I use. Why not just go with one of those uh, services online where you can just drag and drop, do everything very simply, very quickly. Well, one thing is control. If you do it yourself, like I did with my homepage, you have the full control over the content. For example, let's say you have a hosting service, you pay like I do $4 a month, suddenly, this package you have goes away and they double the price. So now it's very expensive and you don't want to put up with that. You just change to another service, to another hosting service, which yeah, gives you the price you want to pay. So you're very flexible here. You have the data all was done in a way that you can just move it simply to another service, to another provider. Also, you have all the control about all the details. So Sure, you have to learn a bit of HTML and CSS, but then you can very, uh, you can make very detailed changes to your homepage. So making it just your own homepage, 
just as you like it. So yeah, when you use template systems online where you drag and drop, you can select from many, many themes, but those look all a little bit similar. And yeah, you might be stuck with a theme, which other photographers also use. And if you do it yourself, theoretically, you could customize it in any way you want, making it really different to everything. But that's not always good. You should make it completely different because those things you see online, um, they look like this for a reason. They work and yeah, you're also free to model your homepage after those. So that's quite nice. Now let's have a look at some prerequisites. So you need some tools to do web development, even if you're not going deep into the actual development where you need to do JavaScript and all that stuff, you still need some tools. For example, if you want to change the look, change the CSS, or if you want to have some HTML, then yeah, you need an editor. And I'd recommend you use a proper one. And this is Visual Studio Code, which is available for Windows and Mac. So it's a tool where you can do a lot of stuff, which supports many, many languages, but it's also just perfect for what we're gonna do. So for CSS, it has nice syntax highlighting and also for HTML. So I'd recommend to download it. If you don't want to just use any editor, you want to edit the files and you'll also be fine. Then what I would recommend to use is some kind of tool that lets you test your homepage. I, for example, use Laragon, which is available under Windows. If you're on a Mac, you could also use XAMPP and don't worry, I leave all the links to that in the description below. And yeah, what you can do with this tool, you can locally run HTTP server. So with this, if you saw this up here, I had this address, which is basically local host. So it's not an address like mebrightphoto.com, which is a World Wide Web, so to say. This here is locally on the machine and it's served by this tool, Laragon. So I can completely customize and test my page offline before I even push it to my server. And I'd recommend that you do the same. So get either Laragon or XAMPP and yeah, you have a proper way to test your page. So the next thing you need to install is Node.js, which is needed by the build system for the homepage. Don't worry about what it's needed for in detail. So it can be used for a lot of stuff. If you're a developer, you maybe already have it, but if not, just download the latest version, install it. It's available for Windows and also for Mac and don't worry about it anymore. Just install it. And then if you want to push your homepage after you've tested it locally, to your server, which you have at some hosting service, you can use under Windows and that's what I'd recommend. WinSCP, which is a great tool because you can synchronize your files. Or if you're on a Mac, there's certainly other tools or FileZilla, for example, is also an easy tool where you can get an FTP connection to your host, to your server and just push the files. This is all you need. And now it's time to have a look how to build the homepage in, yeah, I'd say less than 10 minutes. So I've started Visual Studio Code and also I've extracted the files from the zip file and I now open the folder which contains those. So I've extracted it here into the demo page and in it now you see the source and scripts folders. Just open this. Nice thing in Visual Studio Code, you directly have the file browser here on the left. And if you click on any file, you can inspect it here and edit it but you will not do this to the JavaScript files. We'll do it maybe to the CSS later. But first thing we need to do, if it's not already shown, like in my case, bring up the terminal. So create a new terminal. And this might look a bit different depending on which system you are. But what you need to do now is, and this is uh, the command which will install all the dependencies needed from the build system, npm install. And yeah, this will download quite a few things which will end up in an additional folder up here, you see this node modules popping up. Don't worry about it. Same as with Node.js, it's just stuff that's needed by the build system and you can ignore this folder, same as you can ignore Node.js. So this npm command is basically the reason why we installed Node. Now the second command you need to run is npm install minus g and then gulp CLI and this gulp CLI is basically the command line which is used to compile our homepage later. As with Node and all the stuff, 
you just install it once and then everything's fine. Your homepage build system will be functional. And yeah, once it's gone through, we just enter another command, which you need to remember. It's called gulp, press enter. And what this now does, it runs the build system, compiles the page. And you see there's again a new folder. That's the dist folder. And this is in the end what you push to your server. This contains the final homepage versus the source folder, which is the folder in which we'll be working. Basically, after this commands, the homepage is already ready to go. So a lot less than 10 minutes, but <laughs> to be honest, it's not yet customized. So let's have a look now at this homepage at the current state. So in Laragon, if you have this tool, once you start the program, you have a start button down here which basically starts the HTTP server. So I've now stopped it. If I stop it, this page will be gone. And if I start all, it also has a MySQL database. Then we again have our homepage. And you can change the folder from which the homepage is served to your dist folder. So the folder in which we just compiled the homepage. Now let's have a look what's contained now. So you see it's familiar already to you. That's what I showed you. We have social media, we have portfolio, but without any images and just some uh, demo text. So this is where the customization will come in. We have a contact form with your emails. So also stuff we have to customize. We have an about where you need to pass in information. If you go to imprint, that's not yet filled. Privacy policy is empty. So you would need to provide this yourself. Same for the disclaimer. And also up here, this space, it's just an empty header. So. We're gonna change this now. We now start customizing the homepage. And for the customization, we start with a page data JSON located in the source folder. Up here, the page base URL. For my case, that's just my homepage, mebrightphoto.com, and you would enter whatever domain you have. And here for the German URL, you could have a subfolder, but we'll not bother with German here. We'll assume we just make an English homepage. Your name, which is in my case, Michael Brighton. And it's also for the imprint. So here you enter your street, zip code, and all the information, for example, Germany. And I'll not enter everything. Otherwise, I'll not finish in 10 minutes, I guess. <laughs> so I'm cheating a bit. The page name. For me, it's Michael Brighton Photography. And here's the email. So for example, Michael Brighton at and the domain, my case, mepridephoto.com. Then the contact links. So as I said, we don't bother with German. Let's remove this. And this contact page URL already can leave it as is because it's already provided in the pages in the demo. If you have Google Analytics, you paste the tag here, which is used. Then social media, paste your Facebook. Then I have a YouTube channel as you already know, and then Instagram, and I'll actually remove LinkedIn. So what you could do here, you could just add others. So just copy paste and fill in the information, the URL, the image where you place it, and if it's an essential link. Uh, there's the possibility if you have limited space, you just want to show a few of the social media links, then only the essentials will be shown. Page navigation, currently we have home contact, this for the German, I'll remove this, we no longer need it. And here, I'll just leave this for now, having a home portfolio contact and the about page, but you could add more. And we have a footer, which we just also remove the German part. And you can add more links here, but I'd suggest you leave those. Those are important, need to be on every page. Then the cookie consent bar is also important. We just need an English version, which is important when somebody enters your homepage, he'll get a message to comply with your privacy policy. So that's the customization. Let's just build again, have another look. And now the interesting part, if we go to the imprint, you see there's already the information filled in. I didn't fill in a street, but also this is coming from the data we just edited. Also here under contact, now there's my email address. And now if somebody uses this contact form, the message will go to this email address. So it's already functional. And down here, the social media links also point to the right pages. 
So that was quite easy. Now we have to fill in some content and also some images. Let's start to provide the data for the index PHP, which is the first page when somebody enters your homepage. And I'll just remove all this um, dummy content which I added and insert the data from my homepage. Also, what you see up here, this is the way how you set up the things like the title for this homepage, subtitle, keywords, which is important for SEO, description, canonical. Um, that's basically your page. So it's just index PHP in this case. So you just need to um, put in the subpages here. So subpages relative to your domain. For me, it's uh, www dot mebrightphoto.com slash and then this one will be the index. If I was to have a file here under German, if I go to this index, you see already it's German slash. So you always need the relative path. And I not fill all of that. So this is re really what you do. You think of good keywords, a good description. This is important for the SEO of your page. Otherwise, here's now the content block. Let's build again and have another look. Now you see there's the text which you also see on my main homepage and all we needed to do was adding some very simple HTML. So a headline, some paragraphs, some links. This stuff you also need to do basically if you work with WordPress. You can also use HTML in your WordPress blog posts to structure your content. Now as I said we don't need the German version so let's remove this page DE which is basically providing the link to the German version and also just delete this complete folder with the German pages. So now let's tackle the gallery. And the gallery is already completely final. So the gallery page, the portfolio, the only thing what's missing is some images and also the data describing what images to show and also title of the images and stuff like that. What you need to do in the pages right next to the portfolio where you want to show the images, you create a file and you call this gallery XML. So that's important. This name is what you need to use. And you could have a folder structure where you have galleries for different countries or yeah, different topics. In each of those, you would have a file, a PHP file containing something like this, which is all you need to show the gallery and a gallery XML which looks something like this. So I cheated a bit. I copied this over from my homepage and here you provide all the data and this structure. I'll have documentation on this, but I'll just quickly go through it. There's some header, which is fixed. Then you have an info, an English info. I even have a German info. So everything was this info DE or down here, alt -E. You wouldn't need if you just have an English version. So you put in all the data. Here are the images, the name of the image, the caption, then some alt text. If you want to sell prints, you can leave print information. For example, I do this via Redbubble. So I have a Redbubble link. You could also have limited here. And yeah, you just name all the images. Now the images, it says here, are located under images slash and the thumbnails are under thumbnails. I'll not do it like this. I create subfolders. So I put this into galleries slash favorites slash images. Let's copy this. I'll also place the thumbs there. And yeah, now I copy over just also the images from my homepage. I create this folder first. So galleries slash favorites. In here, I copy all the images and all the small versions. So that's basically a large image. In my case, I use 1280 and then small 200 pixels. So now if I build again, the resulting homepage after I refresh will contain my portfolio with images, with full screen. And if you see here, up here, the URL updates. So you can always, if you want to send a link, directly copy it and when somebody clicks on it, he'll end up directly on that page. Also, if you share this on Facebook, the image that's showing up should be this image. So this is nice. Down here, you see some headline, some text about the gallery. This is what you can set down here. So if I wouldn't have this, if I would just have this part, which is the minimum you need for the gallery, 
this text would be gone. So you see, you can just place any text beneath it and also the print section, which I have on my homepage, is possible to be placed there. And here we have the contact form, which is working as I said, and the about, but I don't really need the about because I have this information already in the home. So let's quickly remove this, remove the about, build again, and it's gone. So one final thing I want to show you about this homepage. Um, up here, this is a lot of space, a lot of real estate, which you can use to include an image, a header image. And also, if I show you how this would look on a mobile device, you see that the homepage is mobile first. You even get a hamburger menu on which you can click. So that's quite neat. And yeah, other than that, I think we've already gone past the 10 minutes. But to be fair, I was also doing a lot of explaining here. And yeah, if you liked it and want to know how to include an image up here instead of just this blank space and maybe also do something more, so have a look at my homepage. When you look here at the galleries, you see I was already mentioning this, this prints available section, how you can activate it, how you could have some share links, and also maybe most important, how you can include a blog, which looks exactly the same like the rest of your page. So WordPress blog, how to set this up. Just let me know. I just want to see how interesting these topics are for you. It's not directly a photography topic but I think it's a very important topic for a photographer because you need a homepage and not everybody uh, wants to pay for those drag and drop clickable homepages. Sometimes you want to spend less and or you're just interested in doing it yourself so really having all the details under control. If this is interesting let me know and I'll do follow-up videos where as I said show how to include such an image, how to create the shop section, how to Add some additional pages here. I can also show you how I sell my tutorials, so a cheap way on setting up a system to sell digital products. If this is interesting for you, I can have more of those videos. But we'll see how this video goes because it was a bit dense maybe in parts, a lot of information, but I think it's very valuable, especially this template. I think it's good and also if something's not working, just leave feedback. It's also the reason why I make this public now and don't just keep it for myself. I want to see this used and also collect feedback and make little fixes. So if something's not working or something's missing, if you are an expert on SEO and know something which I need to change on the structure of the homepage, let me know, send me feedback, contact me and I'll make updates to this. So I'm currently quite active working on this template and there might be times where I don't have much time, but I'll certainly push this farther and provide more functionality, more flexibility. Okay, so that's it now. I hope you liked it and yeah, see you in the next video. Bye.